What is up, Better Doctors? Welcome to the Better Pill Podcast. If you are a struggling pre-med, med student, clerk, intern, or resident, you've come to the right place. Here, we talk about high-yield and only high-yield topics, which will help you in your journey to become better. Better students. Better interns. Better doctors. We are Adrian and Mike, your hosts for this podcast. Before anything else, go and grab a glass of water because it's time for another dose of the better pill. What's up, better doctors? We are back. Yes. Medyo na-extend lang yung holiday break natin, bro, no? Because ang daming ganap. But we are back for another year and another set of fresh episodes. Tama ba, bro? Yes, bro, no? So, galing tayo sa holiday season na uh, puro kainan. Puro walwal, no? So, ang usual tendency natin, magkaroon ng New Year's resolution. And one of that is to become a healthy person in the coming year. Yes. Actually, guilty ako dito, bro, eh. Kasi every year, ang resolution ko, uh, mag-bodybuilding, mag-pull-ups. Pero hanggang ngayon, ang hirap pa rin ako mag, ano, eh, magpalaki ng katawan and makinakain ko. <laughs> kung ano-ano na lang, mga junk food, etc. Yeah, and alam mo, bro, issue talaga sa atin, no, as... Doctors, parang issue talaga yung healthy living. We promote healthy living, healthy habits to our patients. But it's ironic na tayo mismo, we find it hard to uh, maintain a healthy lifestyle, right? Yes, both physical and mental, bro, no? For example, kasi tayo, as doctors, lagi tayong kapos sa oras. Wala tayong time para mag-exercise. Uh, gumawa ng mga activities na nag enjoy para sa atin. Kaya ang, ang result, nagkakaroon tayo ng sedentary lifestyle and stress eating, blah, blah, blah. That's so true, bro. In fact, nung, syempre, nung med school, nagdo-dorm ako, no? and it's very convenient to just eat sa Jollibee or sa McDonald's as opposed to really preparing um, food sa dorm with my own two hands. So, usually, doon tayo sa convenient kasi marami pa tayong workload sa school or sa hospital. Yeah, speaking of convenience, bro, no? For example, meron tayong one hour na break. Imbis na mag-exercise tayo, itutulog na lang natin, no? So, ayun, no? So, ito mga myth natin, bro. Uh, perfect tong uh, guest natin for today kasi yung mga myth natin na binanggit natin, na-debunk niya lahat. So, fit na fit talaga tong guest natin for this episode, bro, no? <laughs> yes, that's right, bro. Hindi lang siya fit na fit for this episode today kasi literally fit na fit din siya. Yes, bro. So, introduce ko na bang ating speaker for today? Yes, bro. Please do the honors. So, our speaker for today graduated at the Ateneo with a degree of BS Biology. Then, she took her Doctor of Medicine program at the St. Luke's College of Medicine. Recently, she just finished her ophthalmology training at the St. Luke's Medical Center where she served as the chief resident. Aside from being a doctor, other activities include being a rhythmic cycling coach and a practitioner of veganism. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Stephanie Someda. Hi, Steph. Hi, guys. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Hello to everyone listening. Hi, Steph. We are super fortunate to have you with us today on our little podcast. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Yes, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. So before anything else, no, um, can you uh, just give us a little introduction about yourself, Steph, for our listeners? Okay, well, introduce myself. This is like so hard. <laughs> <laughs> interview. <laughs> job interview. Okay. So hi, my name is Steph. I just finished my ophthalmology residency, as Mike has have mentioned. And I'm currently preparing for my diplomat exam this April. Um, something about me. I love animals. Um, we have a corgi named Crumpy and a cat named Blue and another cat named Chihu. So we have a lot of animals. I'm also vegan. Um, and so that means I don't consume or use anything from animals. And I have the tendency to clean and organize things. You know, that's my little obsession <laughs> and i also like working out so as mentioned i'm an indoor cycling instructor in perigon wow 
Okay, idol ko na si Steph, bro. <laughs> I also have a cat, <laughs> by the way. His name is Bart Persian. Oh, uh, Persian. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. <laughs> so, you said um, you were a ch- the chief resident, no? Past, immediate, immediate past chief resident ba of... Of Back in 2020, 2020, during the pandemic. So it's very different. Like, I, it's very different because it's the pandemic. So the things I expected to do as a chief resident wasn't exactly what I did at that time. Oh yeah, because it's really yung set up no, during that time. Yes. And we're not always in that kind of set up, no? na online, na konti yung patients, and yan, yeah, may COVID. So, kakaiba talaga yung nangyari kay Steph, no? Exactly. So, yes. um, just a little, I don't know, about being chief resident. What what, it, what was it like being the chief resident during the the pandemic season? And what were the challenges that you faced? Yun. So, it was very different from what I would actually see from the past chief president. So, I was expecting mainly a lot of admin work. Also, um, we did have a lot of admin work. So, I was coordinating with our hospital admin, represented by the hospital chief, um, with regards to mobilizing manpower because it was in the midst of the pandemic. So, that was when we started doing teletriage of the ER patients since we were trying to lessen the exposure of all our healthcare workers. So that's what we coordinated with our consultants and the different departments. Also, 2020 was, I guess, the year of Zoom lectures. So we had to stay in our homes and limit exposure. So just to increase the learning and not waste time, we had to schedule all these lectures with different consultants. And um, also, back in 2020, we still had, fortunately, the postgraduate course. So that was one thing we had to plan out. So basically, a lot of admin work, I guess. And you're always on your phone, on Viber, <laughs> as a chief resident. So, you know, uh, so 2020 was like a year of resilience, bro, no? Yeah, uh, and admin, adjustment. Especially, the, yeah. You made it. Congrats. <laughs> Yes, thank you. I don't know how, pero <laughs> thankfully, I did. So, I think there was a lot of factor yung me working out because we were stuck in our home. So, yun talaga. Like, I really spent a lot of time working out, like, taking care of myself, eating right. So Speaking of, speaking of working out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go yeah, there. Speaking of working out. <laughs> speaking of working out and eating right, no, Steph, how do you maintain a healthy lifestyle? healthy lifestyle okay i think that's pretty relative for everyone but for me um what actually kept me sane during the whole pandemic is having a workout routine and also preparing my own food which i enjoy a lot i instagram it and post it a lot that time so it was july of 2020 actually when my fiance and my parents bought me my own indoor recycling bike so it was for my birthday it was a birthday gift. And that's when I started taking classes, cycling classes via Zoom since we're all in lockdown. So Perigon fortunately had a online class. And then since then, I got so hooked to indoor cycling and have been doing it almost every single day to the point that I became an instructor. So that was the start of my indoor cycling journey. Sorry, Steph. Ano, ano yung ano, Perigon ba? What's that? So Paragon is one of the indoor cycling studios here in Manila. So we have actually several. We have Ride Revolution, we have Electric Studio, and Paragon is one of them. So I joined Paragon and then, because I loved it so much, I became an instructor. (laughs) Unsponsored to, ah. No, it's not Ah. sponsored. (laughs) So you became an instructor on top of being chief resident. Tama ba? Like, um, Mag- I, no, I became uh, chief 2020. I became an instructor last year, 2021. Oh, okay. I see. So, wow. after that. Na. after. Yes. So, what? Grabe yung... You st- um, prior to cycling, you also, you were into working out na. 
like prior to, to July 2020 when you got your your indoor bike. Yes, actually, I'm such a workout junkie. Like even back in med school, I try different things. But the thing is, um, you know, I know some people go to the gym, work out. For me, that never worked out for me because I get bored or mm-hmm. parang I have to have a program and paying for a personal trainer costs a lot. And we were med students who don't have enough money. So I usually go to classes. So I tried a lot. I tried a lot of things. I tried CrossFit. I tried pole dancing, which I was hooked on to during med school because wow. parang... It's a different kind of high also if you achieve um, a certain move or a certain trick on the pole. So it's that kind of achievement you have that reinforces you to just keep going back. So yeah, so I tried pole dancing, I tried aerial silk, aerial hoop, a lot of <laughs> aerial stuff. <laughs> Mga buhis buhay. Anyway, yeah. Gymnast para tong si Chief? Ni naman. But yeah, I also love dancing even back in college. So... But then, you know, as you grow older, we're not that, you know, physically <laughs> inclined to move the same way as we we did back then. So, yeah, more of fitness. And then during the start of the lockdown, since we were at home and I didn't have any bike then, so I do like home workout videos, which was very inexpensive. It's actually free because it's on YouTube. So that's what I did and followed every day. To keep me sane and healthy, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice point, no? That's a nice point, bro. Na that Steph made that you, when you think of physical fitness, because the first thing that comes to mind is the gym, lifting weights, the treadmill. But there are yes. a lot of other avenues. There are a lot of other activities which you can try. Parang hanapin mo kung anong Uh, which suits you best. Marami kasing activities you can choose from eh. Hindi lang gym. Na yun yung usual, no? So, for the med students out there, and you don't have to pay a lot naman. In fact, Steph said, marami naman right now, no? Maraming free courses or videos Meron online. Sa YouTube. Can, yeah, yeah, sa YouTube. Sa Google, yeah. Tsaka yeah, aside from that, free. bro. Aside from that pala, sorry. Ano? <laughs> Uh, yung myth natin pala as medical students, parang waste of time yung exercise kasi minsan tumatagal na one or ganun. So, ang tanong ko kay Steph, uh, how do you make time for exercise? Nababawasan ba yung time for study mo or time for sleep? Kaya naman talaga siya. Nababawasan time for ba? sleep. Oh. Oh. How, how often do you, in let's go back to med school, how often did you work out? Um, did, did you work out every day or did you really have a regular schedule or... Depende lang sa free time. Kung wala masyado exams, then you work out, or ganun. Actually, so, it it's a good question because it depends. So, as med students, we have schedules, right? So, if it's not exam week or any any point close to exams, then I do have a schedule based on the poll class schedule because they have schedules. So, I think that was like um, MWF. And Saturday, so those days I'll be in the pole studio for sure. And usually it's at night because they cater also to working people, um, even students. So the classes are at night right after all your classes. So it's a very, very good schedule that worked out for me. And then if I do have um, exams, that's so that's when I have a little break from working out because I have to focus on studying. But then that usually like take a week or two lang naman. So then after that, I resume to working out. Yeah. So it really depends on your schedule, bro, no? Yeah, you have to be flexible naman with your schedule. But yeah. I think the important thing lang is uh, consistency ba? Uh, I mean, yes. kailangan... Agree. Like, you should make it part of your routine talaga. Routine, no? And you adjust na And lang depending time. on the your academic load, no? Kasi sh- sometimes, syempre, pag exam week... Um, you cannot, I mean, dapat mag-aaral ka din. You cannot sacrifice your study time kasi important yun. Yes. Then you go back naman after. So, tip for our med What students. Happens ba? What happens ba, Steph, if, if you don't exercise for one week? Parang nangihina ka ba? Wala ka ba sa mood? Well, well, what ba? Parang, I don't know, but my body just really craves for that 
exercise. I don't know, maybe it's the endorphins. It makes you happy, you know, like right after you work out or do something physical, any physical activity. Your body releases endorphins yeah. and that's a happy hormone, makes you happy. So maybe that's my endorphin craving body telling me to you know you gotta work out or something <laughs> but yeah it's like something that i really really look for if i don't do it related to that question uh, what personal benefits did you see no? especially during med school ano ba yung benefits na nabigay nung working out sa med stud- med school life mo less burnout ka ba less stress like other yes for me, that um, little, f- actually it's just one hour. So that one hour for me is very precious because it's the time for me to distress, think about anything non-med related and just, you know, focus on trying to do something to make me um, healthy or physically fit or even to achieve like a specific move or a specific skill. So for me, that's what kept me sane and prevented me from burning out because you know med school is really hard you have to study you have to give your 100 percent on top of being also competitive if you know it's let's face it it's a competitive field you're trying to um top one another you know you can't just be on the bottom so you just have to have something to keep you sane amen i super agree with you on that (laughs) stuff in fact for me um that one to two hours I spend in the gym every day. It's like my me time. I consider it sort of like meditation, uh, a break from the everyday grind. So it's that's also very precious for me personally, yung time na yun. Parang, me, parang meditation talaga siya in a way for me. Yes, agree. It doesn't have to be like yoga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. meditation can be yeah. working out. True. At saka bro, minsan na mapansin ko, uh, we, parang we commit to social media for one hour a day. So, kaya naman talaga. Kasi, imbis na mag-social media, we can do exercise naman. No? Agree. Yeah. Agree. Time management lang talaga. And in fact, I think we spend more, more than one hour on social media. Especially ngayon. Pa, Netflix nga, usually, two hours, diba? Kung mag-binge watching. Yeah, so, ka. discipline lang talaga. You just really have to make working out part of our routine. Like we make taking a bath, taking a shower, or eating part of our routine. Parang ganun lang. Let's just make it part of our everyday activities talaga. Kumbaga, part ng autopilot natin, no? Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, let's go to, ano naman. Ito, I'm really interested in this. Veganism. Uh, when when did you start? <laughs> when did you start with ano, veganism? Para kinakabahan tayo. <laughs> I know, I know it's a very um it's an issue. <laughs> okay, what about veganism? Well, when did, when, so you when sta- did I yeah, start? Yeah. <laughs> um the okay, I started being vegan. Actually, I have a date. I have an anniversary. Oh. August 25. <laughs> yeah, August 25, 2018. So that was um, about four years ago. So this is like my fourth year. But before that, I've been vegetarian since high school. So since like 2006, I've been vegetarian. Wow. Wow. For, for the benefit of those the who don't know. Yeah. Can you tell yes. the difference between vegan and vegetarian? Okay, good question. I hope um, all restaurants are listening <laughs> because they have to know the difference. But shout yeah, so McDo. yeah, shout out to all the restos I go to. <laughs> so vegetarian mainly pertains to one's diet. So a vegetarian does not consume any meat, so including beef, pork, chicken, also seafood or any living animal for that matter. But may still consume animal byproducts like eggs, milk, butter, cheese, any dairy product. Um, on the other hand, veganism, for me at least, is more of a lifestyle. Um, of course, with regards to food, vegans do not eat any form of animal and anything that comes from animals. So again, that includes eggs, dairy, products like milk, butter, and cheese, even honey. So um, I even don't eat honey. anything. Wow. Even honey. <laughs> yeah. 
So Baka even honey. Baka magtampo si Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> but it comes from B. So actually, it's a it's a issue. Uh, it's a topic of debate because they say the honey doesn't really harm the bees. But I've read in a lot of articles that to get the honey, they have to substitute a sugar substance in the hive so which is not really nutritious for the bees so in effect you're actually depleting their nutrition so for me i'd rather just not eat and you know be on the safe side yeah so i, I read pala no, yung, yung veganism pala it's not about diet pala parang more of philosophy siya parang ganun yung nabasa kay may right Tapos yeah yung so mga types siya ganun Yeah, well, for me, as a vegan, I also refuse to buy or own any material made of leather, fur, wool, anything that comes from animals. And, well, since you're also um, someone who cares much about animals, so I also try to make a conscious effort to live a more sustainable lifestyle. So, because naturally you care about the environment if you also care about the animals. So, yeah, less waste, less plastic, all those stuff. So it's really yeah, a dati, lifestyle. Bin, binili mong Yeah, yeah pala dati binili mong shampoo, no? Yung shampoo, ang tawag doon, yung shampoo na... <laughs> you remember, it's a shampoo bar. <laughs> Yun, shampoo bar, ang galing nga. Yes, because I try not to use or buy mga shampoos in bottles because, you know, it's just lots of waste. Yeah, so wow. basically, veganism, it's like a stricter form of vegetarianism. Like super... Would you say it's if yeah if you can say it that way yes because you're um and on one hand people see it as you're restricting yourself from all these food products but yeah you know, on the other hand it's really a conscious decision yeah. it's a philosophy it's a lifestyle and marami siyang benefits no um based on your yes. experience Steph what are the benefits that it has given you. Um, medically, number one, of course, is decreased risk of heart disease and stroke, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm really selling this out. <laughs> um, what else? So, um, also, if the, I know people have issue with constipation. For me, never an issue. I have very good bowel movement. Sorry for the <laughs> poop talk, but yeah, it's true. Actually, um, I, I asked you about that, diba? Kung yung poops mo, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember. That's why I mentioned it. So, yeah, I'm never constipated. And personally, I've never gotten sick since high school. Also, wow. never got COVID. Knocked on wood. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never got COVID. Never got sick. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's also um, in combination with working out, exercise. So, it's re- it really boosts your immune system. Um, what else? Konting so, se- segue lang. No? Kasi nabanggit dati ni Adrian, dati nag-try siya maging vegetarian. Yeah, Tapos I was gonna ask. Niya, lagi siyang bloated, mm-hmm. lagi siyang may flatus or utot. Ano? Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> ano ask you reason? that, Steph. Because there was like a couple of months I tried. Hindi naman yun, because I ate fish. So, pescetarian siguro ang tawag sa akin. Yeah, but okay. I consumed yes. a lot of vegetables, more on vegetables talaga during that uh, number of months. And okay. issue ko talaga because yun, lagi akong bloated and nagpa-flatulence talaga ako. Maybe it's with the digestion of the the leaves. I'm not sure. But did you have that issue? Or baka my body was still adjusting to it? I didn't give myself enough time to adjust? Yes, I think that's the most reasonable um, explanation for that. If It's your body adjusting. And, you know, like, Plants in general, we know that's made of um, cell wall, cellulose. Yeah. So we can't really <laughs> digest it. So the probably maybe you know our bacteria are you know overacting and ah. you know releasing all those gases. But it's for me it never it was an issue, I guess, because I was vegetarian for the longest mm-hmm. time. So my body is completely um, adjusted to it. And um, siguro I know beans. Cause a lot of flatulence. Yeah. Were you consuming a lot of beans? Well, I know for the protein, no? Because you're a body. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, beans really make your utot super, I know, mabaho. But, yeah, yeah, that was oh an issue, gosh. definitely. So, okay. 
Yeah, because I know someone also who was trying to go vegetarian and he was consuming so much beans for the protein. And for sure, you will have a lot of flatulence for that. So, But I don't think it would be an issue. The bloatedness would also be a result of, you know, all the gases in your mm-hmm. digestive system. So I think it'll really just take time because your body's adjusting to a new kind of diet. But for me, I don't think it's anything of a harm or anything of a something to be worried about. Pero when you were starting to be to become a vegetarian, ano bang mga experience mo sa katawan mo when you were adjusting? Uh, that was so long ago. I don't remember, <laughs> but I don't. I just I was happy because <laughs> I, I was happy because I was eating any animal. Well, at that time I was still eating eggs, milk, dairy. But then the funny thing is, it started because I that was the time I took diving scuba diving classes or lessons. And then after scuba diving, I saw all the fishes in the sea, <laughs> and I couldn't eat them anymore. <laughs> and then after that. After that, yeah, it followed na lang na even beef, pork, chicken because they're all animals. So that's when it started. Funny story, but yeah, that's how I started. But I didn't, I don't think I experienced any digestive issue. Yeah, yeah. maybe I just didn't give myself enough time to adjust. No, na give up t- kagad ako. <laughs> <laughs> Bahana digla yung katawan yes. mo, no. Don't give Another up. issue, sorry, which made it hard for me also during that transition no, when I attempted is that sa bahay namin, I mean, people are not, um, they eat meat, no? So, it's... A, yes, good, good diba mahirap yun point. When, for example, as a family, you have a meal, tas there's meat right in front of you. It's very tempting to, ano, to eat meat <laughs> when everybody's eating meat. Was that an issue for you also? For me, it wasn't. Because for me, I like seeing meat makes me not want to eat. So I think it's different for people who love meat but are trying to shift to a vegan or vegetarian lifestyle. So if you have that, you know, that craving that you really like meat, you want, you like the taste of it, for sure it will be difficult. But in my case, it's different, I guess, because it's more of, I don't want to eat it because it's an animal or it was an animal. <laughs> so, I never had that craving. Yeah, so you oh, were not a meat okay, lover okay, to begin na. with then. No? So, it was yes. easier for you, the transition. Yes. But it was also very difficult at first because my whole household was a meat eater. Yeah. So, I was the only one. Um, I was the only vegetarian and vegan then. But then... The, um, at some point, I think my family got um, inspired or influenced by my diet. So, at some point, they started being vegetarian. And then, now my sister is actually vegan, completely vegan. So, wow. at least we're both, we have two in the family. Yun ang gusto ko kay, kay Steph, no? Hindi siya yung pushy type na vegan. Yung, ito, kainin mo to, kainin mo to. <laughs> Para ano siya, yung pinapakita lang niya yung benefits. Tapos, stop na siya. Tapos, pag narealize mo, tsaka mo mai, maiisip na, okay pala yung vegan. Kasi yung, di ba usually, pag may mga vegan, ah, da, wag, wag mong kainin yan, ganyan, ganyan. Yung mga pushy type of person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To each his own yeah, naman. I'm not the activist. Yes. <laughs> like I respect I respect everyone's decision. Like I you know, we were born not being vegan, not knowing the true benefit or the true disadvantage. And for me, you know, parang you just have to respect everyone's decision or everyone's practice. Like religion. Like, you can't push one religion on another person because you think it's wrong or you think it's right. So for me, you know, I I just wanna be vegan so I hope everyone respects it as well. <laughs> Speaking of not being born vegan, meron bang problem na in the long run kapag vegan ka? Kasi diba usually yung evolution natin, I mean yung nung panahon, ang mga tao talaga carnivore. I mean, wala hey, talaga sa... Lalim naman yan, bro. Yeah, but... Hindi ko alam yeah, ko yeah, in the long run. <laughs> it's okay. We can discuss actually. I've read a lot of those things also because, you know, parang you you get worried because it's also your health that we're talking about so um 
it's uh it's still an issue up to now if like had us as human beings were born carnivores because like anatomically speaking if you look at our teeth mostly we have molars which is for grinding mm-hmm. chewing mm-hmm. right um same with herbivores <laughs> and we have very very tiny incisors. incisors yes very very tiny i don't think you can even cut out fresh meat from our teeth <laughs> or if you can i don't know Good point, but no. yeah so it's <laughs> so anatomically, <laughs> we are more herbivores than carnivores. Parang yun yung ano dun. Yes, I believe so. Or if ever omnivores, but you know more. Siguro fish. I'm sure, like um, our previous um evolutionary beings <laughs> work oh. with fish. So I think the carnivorous part only came in because the the agriculture or the plants were in shortage so that's oh. siguro when the carnivores would or the human beings would start um, resorting to animals as food but yeah evolutionary speaking i think we're more of a herbivore or an omnivore another I'll question search that article chief yeah. another question What's regarding up? this ano, no, like if if you go on a plant based diet can you take all sorry i'm Medyo ignorant ako dito, no? Can you take all the nutrients that you need? Or would you have to take supplements for some other minerals or nutrients which you might not be able to get from plants alone? Yes, that's a very good question. Because, you know, if you're getting into a certain diet, you have to know the risks and, of course, the benefits. So, for plant-based diet, um, actually, everything is almost complete. The only only vitamin that lacks in a plant-based diet is vitamin B12 or cobalamin. So this is, they say, or this vitamin is found in animals, but there are many supplements naman. So that's one thing that should be also be considered if you go on a plant-based diet. Okay. So you'd have to take B12. Yes, I actually take B12. But there's also a lot of B12 fortified food products now even bread there's like B12 fortified, fortified bread yeah okay uh, so 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 yung bread pala pwede sa vegan yes there are a lot of breads that don't have milk or egg products in them like um, sourdough yeah super favorite ko sourdough so <laughs> sourdough chibata focaccia like there are a lot of breads actually another issue sorry and dami kong issue <laughs> Because yes. as I have said, no, I I tried because I attempted, so I know the issues, na which comes with it. Another issue I had was preparation, and the variety. In in my province in Dumaguete, there's about two to three vegan restaurants. So, um, do nakita ko na you there's really a variety, like a myriad ways to prepare veggies or plant-based food na. Masarap talaga, bro. Masarap. Parang, sometimes, it's That's like nice. eating meat talaga. May mga dishes sila na parang oh. kumakain lang din ako ng meat. Pero, su- plant-based siya. Well, anyways. Yun ba yung bod- bodhi ba tawag doon? Bodhi? I'm not sure. I'm not. That's one of the, that's actually one of the vegetarian places. They also use um, plant-based alternative. It's actually good, but I don't know if it's, um, available now. I heard parang wala na sila. Pero that mm. was so vegetarian option before. But it's nice ha, that there are vegan restaurants in Dumaguete. Yeah. Kasi marami ding health buff dun eh. So, kaya maraming ganong places. Anyways, my question is, when it comes to food preparation sa bahay, how do you, ano, how do you maintain yung variety nung like, do you cook your own food or do you order from some place na nagsiserve ng yeah, different so, types of, ano? And how much time do you need per day to, pre- mm-hmm. to prepare, di ba? Especially med students, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good question. So, I actually like making my own food. So, it's also a plus for me. I, siguro back in med school, I, if I had the time, I'd, 
meal prep. So meal prep also saves you a lot of money. You don't have to keep ordering out. So I usually just prepare stuff that can be can last a week or so. Like um, siguro like uh, a vegan sort of fried rice or salad. Or I super love noodles. So um, bok noodles with sauce. Super easy to make. You just have to boil the noodles and like add fresh cucumbers, fresh carrots, all the stuff. And what else? I also love making hummus. So. <laughs> If you know hummus, it's like, you know, just, you can put it on mm-hmm. anything. You can put it on bread, um, you can make it a dip. It's very parang easy. Sa, parang sa Persian ata, yan, no? Sa mga Persian. Yeah, Persian. parang Middle Eastern, yan. Yeah, Middle Eastern. But I super love hummus. And then, um, well, for me, I'm very low maintenance, ano man. So, if there's bread, I just grab any, um, like, any mushroom, <laughs> mushroom. I mean, I mean, low maintenance of mushrooms. <laughs> I love mushrooms also. But yeah. So, like, anything I can just put together that's available in my fridge or that's available in the market, I do so. And salad is always the easiest to make. It's everything fresh. You don't even have to cook it. So, um, you just need a, a good dressing and that's it. You already have a meal. But when I'm busy, especially during residency, I didn't have time to cook or prepare. I'd have uh, my go-to places to order from. So, um, and since it's in St. Luke's, the, the nearest is along Tomas or in Mother Ignacia, my favorite places are the vegetarian kitchen. There's also what I've found, um, it's like a diet delivery service who caters to vegans. So, they're all, they're purely vegan. So, I forgot. Oh, I think good food good food vegetarian something like that yeah so for them they're super cheap meals like it can go as low as 100 to 150 per oh, meal so it's a good bad, budget no? friendly meal. yeah and and so, so it, we can put the link below no kahit hindi sponsored yeah. parang may idea yeah yeah, yeah, yeah of course yeah so you know where to start because if you don't like cooking then you can try out these places and see how it goes for you you know it's something to try out at least pero yung 100 pesos, uh, medyo busog ko na ba? Or, or, or parang merienda ba yun? <laughs> you know what? Well, I guess it's also relative. For me, I, I don't eat that much. So 100, that 100 meal for me is already like busog na ako. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It also comes with rice. So for those oh, who nice. love rice. So yeah. you can choose brown rice, white rice. Okay, it's, bukas it's really ako. So try ko bukas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try it out. Okay, so let's wrap this up, no? Um, can you just like sort of give us a list of the benefits aside from the obvious health benefits, stuff that veganism and maintaining an active lifestyle give us doctors? Aside from the health, obvious naman yun, what other benefits can it give us that will ano, help us become better doctors? Wow, okay. Closing remarks. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is a hard thing to say. But okay, like, so personally, for me, yo, yeah, personal benefits yeah. that is given you. Actually, I I like what you said Adrian during the the introduction where um we are doctors and as doctors we promote health. And so these two things are very important to me, um a proper diet and exercise. Because these are the two things we advise our patients, especially for those, you know, with acquired diseases. We advise them lifestyle modification, which is proper diet and exercise. So, you know, for me as a doctor, you have to practice what you preach. And for me, prevention is also key. So we can't just keep prescribing medication over medication. And we have to be ambassadors of what it really means to have good health. So that, again, boils down to our lifestyle. And for me, it's been um, quite of a journey, I guess, being vegan. Um, I found out a lot of things, a lot of ways to be creative with my food, and a lot of things to stand up for as well, because I'm not only doing this for my diet, but I'm also doing this because I love animals, and I love the environment, and I want us to... Um, live longer and have a more sustainable future 
and you know you can't just keep on consuming things not minding of what it does or impacts um, the earth how it impacts the earth and how it impacts other people around us not just as humans also as you know different species living on this earth so yeah i guess it's also something to live by and also for others to try out wow very well said no diba if the patient ano knows that you practice what you preach diba usually uh nagkakaroon sila ng trust sa atin diba yeah and mas nagiging yes, compliant sila sa advice natin compliant sila yeah you have to be living um examples of what you prescribe your patients exactly and i really admire um yung lifestyle ni Steph no how she made uh veganism not just a diet pero parang a way of life, a philosophy. Oh, siya, na yeah. yung, yung benefits niya, hindi lang personal. Parang, um, since it's a way of life, yeah, yeah it, it also impacts the environment and, you know, my social impact din siya. And aside from that, yes. I like what Steph said na prevention is key. We have to, you know, walk the talk talaga. Kasi it's very important, no? Um, personal experience lang, di ba, I've told you, bro sibs na um i i na i found out that i was hypertensive at this age no my my blood pressure was always above 130 um for the past two years and i i that's why i i really i know focus on diet and exercise and without meds na napababa ko yung yung blood pressure ko so conscious effort bro I like what you said, bro, no? Yung preventive medicine, no? Preventive health, no? Naalala mo ba, mo ba bro, dati nung med tayo? Merong lecture about exercise is medicine? Yeah, yeah, Kasi yeah. Kasi bro, para napapansin mo yung ngayon, yung modern day medicine, para naka, nakafocus sa pagbigay Pharma. ng gamot, uh, treatment, surgery. Mm-hmm. Pero ang pinaka-root talaga, ano eh, yun ang dapat i-address natin eh. Starting with diet. And exercise. Lifestyle. Yeah, and exercise. So, yung lesson na pwede natin makuha kay Steph ngayon na wala, parang zero pa lang yung disease natin. Uh, take action agad tayo. Yeah, it's challenging yes. doing exercise and, you know, um, having a healthy diet. It's really challenging, no? Kasi hindi siya convenient. But then again, I think um, yung, as human nature naman that we people, we like a challenge and you know, the challenge will motivate us, push us forward. So, yeah, it's challenging, pero kailangan eh. Kailangan. So, I think we should make an effort talaga to make diet and exercise a part of our lives. Yes, bro, no? So, ang taga na nag-uusap pala, no? 40 minutes na ba tayo? But super high yield so, nung usapan. And yeah, thank super you, Steph, high yield, yeah. For having insights and knowledge that we gained. Yeah, so, yeah, na- makimiss ko na yung pagkain ng burger and steak. <laughs> <laughs> Mayroon so, na eh, vegan burger. Oh, wow. Andun ba yan sa, ano, yung restaurant na ilalagay natin sa link? Yes, they have oh, vegan burger. Try it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, bro, do you have, ano, yung top three or top two learning points for this episode? If you have. Okay, top three learning points. Uh, actually, nabanggit ko na kanina, no, from... From Steph, number one, prevention is key. Diba? Before the onset of disease, dapat i-prevent na natin to. Um, I think that should be our uh, primary advice sa mga patients natin. Uh, before, before pa kailangan natin magbigay ng gamot, dapat i-prevent na natin yung onset ng disease. And I think we can address that through a healthy diet and exercise. Number two, Amen. practice what you preach. Walk the talk. Lagi tayong nagbibigay ng advice sa patients natin every day tapos tayo mismo hindi natin kayang i-maintain yung healthy lifestyle. So, medyo hypocritical yun, no? So, I think we really have to walk the talk. Alright. Ako naman, bro, isa lang yung lesson learned ko ngayon, eh. Uh, siguro, ang natutunan ko, we are what we eat. Mm, diba? Sabi mm, ni mm. Steph, no? Nice. Parang philosophical yung veganism. Kasi, tiba we only live once, bro, no? Kasi, pag nagkasakit tayo, sabi ay, dapat naging vegan na lang pala ako para naiwasan itong, <laughs> diba? So, st- starting very early, isipin nyo na we are what we eat, what we eat, 
will impact our lives, our health, etc. So agree, super agree. So super thankful tayo kay Steph na dinis niyo yung perspective niya. And thank you very much for enlightening us. Medyo ah, like ang dami kong questions no with regards to yeah. veganism especially. Yeah. Thank you very much pwede for enlightening mag- us. And our yeah, pwede pa rin pala mag-burger bro no kahit vegan, meron pa lang vegan. Yeah, vegan yeah. Pwede, pwede. As I have said, may mga vegan food na it just like eating meat. Swear, meron talaga. Sana may lechong kawaling vegan no. <laughs> Meron. Oh, di ba? <laughs> meron, meron, pala. meron na. Meron pala. Sige. Think so of other di... things. Meron yan. Anyways, Hindi pala kailangan maging malungkot. Any final message for our <laughs> listeners, Steph? Before we leave. Final message? Um, Dami ko nang sabi. <laughs> so, if you can try, you know, you don't have to fully be a vegan to care about animals and the environment. You can even just, you know, try Meatless Mondays. It's a thing na Um, every Monday, you'll just not eat anything meat or animal-related. So, you know, it's the small things that actually make a huge impact if we all do it all together. If a lot of people do it, you know, it doesn't matter how small it is. You know, it's just a matter of trying. So, thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Steph. So, pwede mo pala, Steph, i-plug yung spinning classes mo. Pwede mo ilagay yung link below. Yes, if you want to try indoor cycling, do visit perigon.co. I'll give you the link so you can try yeah. it out. Thank you. Thank right. you very much. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Steph, Steph for the time. Super thank you talaga. Thank you also. I enjoyed. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Once again, this has been Adrian. And this has been Mike. Catch us again next week for your refill prescription of The, the Better, Better Pill. Pill.